Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Gyaneshwar, who is former dean uh, at the Fiji uh, uh, National University. Uh, himself and Dr. Naidu have done incredible work uh, in Fiji, which he will discuss. Uh, thank you. Thank you. My gratitude to Swami for allowing us this privilege, and thank you, Dr. Reddy, for inviting us to speak. And Nadna Chandran, you not only have helped Fiji in many ways, but you've also facilitated us being here today. Thank you very much. Um, the journey that I'm going to describe is really part of our sadhana. And um, uh, Fiji is uh, situated in the middle of the South Pacific. From all the problems that you've had with Harvey in uh, Texas, what I'm going to say now becomes minuscule. And I think that is really true about life in general. When you look at other people's problems, your own problems are nothing. Um, the population of Fiji, as Nadna said, is about 900,000. The population is divided into two ethnic groups. One, the Itokes, the original inhabitants of Fiji, who arrived there about 3,000 years ago. And then we, the Fijians of Indian descent, are descendants of about 60,000 Indians who were taken to Fiji from India between 1879 and 1916. At the time that the Indians first came to Fiji, Fiji had a high mortality rate due to a high perinatal mortality and maternal mortality rate. But diabetes and hypertension was not known. Today, 80% of deaths in Fiji are attributed to NCDs, and many of these deaths are occurring prematurely. What I'd like you to see here is the fact that whilst in Australia and New Zealand life expectancy has been going up, in Fiji it has tended to plateau at the age of about 63. And what is even more worrying is that amongst women, Ethiopian women, their life expectancy might be less than that of their mothers. Women's health issues include poor contraceptive prevalence rates, adolescent fertility rates are high, sexually transmitted infections are high, cervical cancer rates with case mortalities are one of the highest reported in the world. And in many countries, cervical cancer is not a disease that is prevalent uh, because of screening. In Fiji, only about 8% of women get screened. The political instability in 1987 led Swaran and I to leave Fiji uh, because it was difficult to survive in that context. Uh, we spent 23 years in Australia and then, under the influence of the Australian SAI medical team, we felt that we needed to return to Fiji and do something significant as far as our service uh, capacities were concerned. Over 40% of the population is um, uh, at poverty level, according to World Bank. Alcohol abuse is common. Domestic violence rates are very high with about 64% of women reporting that they've had uh, uh, an experience of intimate partner violence. In context, the health budget for Fiji is minuscule. I'm not going to talk about your US budget because I don't think you manage health very well in the US. <laughs> but let me say that in Australia and New Zealand, where health is probably managed a lot better, they spend something like 20 times more uh, per capita on health than we do in Fiji. So we need to take things into perspective from that point of view. In this context, um, Visesi Sai Health Center was set up. Uh, this is uh, owned by a charitable trust. Uh, which uh, Swaran and I set up uh, through Swami's grace. And we have a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Health, 
who provide us with a doctor and three nurses, some consumables and medications that allows us to run uh, a uh, outpatient service. And then we bid for project grants that uh, funds our primary health care program. Let us now just think a little bit uh, after what Mohan had said earlier on on day one. Uh, as far as indicators for NCDs are concerned, Fiji was reputedly to be one of the worst performing gold medalists uh, in the stakes. Uh, obesity, uh, overweight uh, people account for about 60% of our population. Hypertension and diabetes in the last 10 years has risen dramatically. What you need to know is that in the 1960s, diabetes was virtually unknown amongst the Ito care community. We actually conducted a baseline survey in Fiji, um, which is um, which is here. That is because we thought if we did a baseline study, we might be able to see what impact we make after 10 years of interventions that we have planned for the community. Now, in dealing with the health challenges, of course, we do provide curative health services like any other primary health care unit would, and we see over 100 patients a day with a significant number of high-risk NCD patients as well. But our main focus has been preventative health. And the preventative health is designed to empower the communities through awareness raising, information and education, advocacy and screening. Now this is a completely new paradigm for Swaran and I who have spent about 70 years in curative health and we knew very little about primary health care. We go out into the rural communities, we listen to the people, we provide information and education and advocacy about lifestyle risk factors, but the most important thing is that we work together in trying to identify interventions that are going to work. We work with other sectors other than health to ensure that education, women's health, uh, 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 Ministry of Women and Child Welfare, uh, youth and sport are all involved in our intervention programs. This is something that links with our spirituality, but the thinking behind this was that of a Fijian primary health care doctor, Dr. Tukana, who talks about gifts of life and the fact that if you want to maintain health, health you need to preserve these gifts. If you abuse these gifts, then like the tree that was mentioned earlier, it'll shrivel and your health will be destroyed. To do this work, we needed help and the help was made available by us identifying community uh, people who could be trained over a two week period to provide advocacy and to be supported by us in going out into the community. So these are community people who are working in the community with a community that understands them, knows them, and they in return understand how the community functions. We've trained over 100 for Fiji, uh, but working within uh, our own community, we have about 12 community health workers. We go out and educate uh, on wellness, and for this we use the SNAP tool, which is about uh, smoking, about good nutrition, about avoiding uh, alcohol, and about increasing physical activity. In response to the work that we've been doing, we were successful in a bid with the European Union, which allowed us to look at a human rights project on strengthening rights of rural women in providing them with knowledge, access, and control of their reproductive health. And this happens by 
our team going out and listening, and here's Swaran talking to a woman who had come for a pap smear, but really her problem was domestic violence and a disrupted family, and it required a completely different approach as to how we deal with this type of an issue. We've trained staff who can sit down and talk at a one-to-one -one level. We go to schools. We provide targeted clinical care, which primarily is about screening. We don't provide clinical services other than screening. We provide family planning services. We provide some gynecological advice and services, but no other clinical services. So this unit is primarily for screening purposes. With the work that Swaran and her team did, the UNDP made a chance visit to our health center, and this is Swami's work. Um, they were so impressed with the statistics that were provided that they then went to the United Nations Fund for Population Activity and said, give this AC a bus. So they didn't give us a bus, they gave us the money, which allowed us to design the bus that we've got now for outreach work. We go to university students. We teach education in human values and decision making in the community. And we are not uh, scared to share Swami's teachings with the community. We talk to youth. And the Young Mothers Program is an interesting program because young mothers tended to be very isolated and even their families, these are mainly unmarried women, their families uh, did not accept them. So our program was really, and this program was conceived by community health workers, was to try and rehabilitate these women and almost all of those girls now are in active employment. We nurture the youth and we educate their teachers about NCD prevention and wellness. We do physical activity and have fun. We have 30 community, collective community development programs at the moment underway where the community is defining what type of interventions it would it would like to develop for what particular problem. Our role basically is to help the community uh, become more empowered to deal with its own issues and problems. We have done a substantial amount of work in the last six years since we've been established. Visesi Sai Health Center was opened on April the 2nd, 2011, uh, about a month prior to Swami's Mahasamadhi. We were involved in Cyclone Winston support. We were asked to provide uh, uh, emergency clinical services. This is a health center in the periphery that was de-roofed, and uh, we supported uh, this uh, area for about three weeks, taking medical students and our mobile bus. We've uh, published so that policies may be uh, influenced. We are piloting tools such as the um, uh, pen scoring tool which assigns risks for a major cardiovascular event to high risk NCD patients so that we can evaluate whether the work that we are doing is being effective or not and some preliminary data would suggest that we are showing some impact. We tell the community what they need to do about important issues like Nari Shakti. And that is one of the responses that we have about the high domestic violence rate. And this is making a difference in a small way. But one of our community health workers was able to talk on radio about the domestic violence that she was facing and how her sisters could avoid that by being empowered. We visit very remote areas, and this is about three and a half hours of rough 
uh, drive uh, into the hinterland. Um, we work very closely with the community and the message is that if the roots are good, the fruits will be beautiful. And these are homegrown fruits from the backyard gardens of people. And thank you very much. Our team started with three people and now they're about 25. Sairam. <laughs>